Hey everyone, welcome to Drive By Reviews. Today we're looking at an AFS 24 to 85 millimeter lens from Nikon. Now this is a 36 times standard zoom lens for FX format or full frame format. Now today I'm gonna to be using a D7500, which is a DX format camera. And you can do that with these FX format lenses because later on you can use it on your full frames if you upgrade or if you have a full frame you can swap. Just keep in mind that the crop is going to be more like it's 50% higher on the focal length. So you can almost think instead of 24 millimeters, it's starting more around 36 millimeters. In any case, it comes with all those great lens elements that Nikon claims, gives it great clarity, great color, and all the rest. So we're gonna test that today and see if it does exactly what they claim, except on the D7500. Here we go. Boom, we go right to the box, here we go. It's got the AFS Nikkor 24 to 85 millimeter F3.5 to 4.5 G. It's got that ED extra low dispersion glass and of course VR vibration reduction two technology. And I believe this one comes with the hood and a case. Looks like it was made in China. <laughs> What's not made in China these days? All right, here we go. Boom, right on the top there, they always got Sitting on the top, the lens hood and the case, if it's included. Looks like we've got a pretty massive lens hood here. Okay, yeah, nice. It's got the cutaway. And then here is the lens. Pretty decent packaging. I give him a B plus. And there she is. Oh, it's just loosely on there. Nice, branded back cover on this guy, branded front cover. There she is right there. Metallic contact, very nice. Oh boy, what a stiff zoom. All right, 24 to 85, feels like slightly stiffer from 24 to right past the 35 mark. But overall, pretty good right there. And then the focus ring, nice and stiff. Pretty good. We got some switches on here too, by the way. You got your VR on and off switch, and you've got your manual and your M slash A mode, manual automatic, which thank you, hallelujah, I like that. That's great. Now, although this lens is relatively compact, it's got some significant weight to it for its size. So it feels really sturdy in the hand. Definitely didn't chintz out on these components. So I'll be excited to see how this performs on the D7500. All right, and without further ado, let's slap it onto the camera and see how it performs. Here we go. Here's an example of the lens at its shortest and longest focal lengths while on a DX format camera. Nothing amazingly wide here, no amazing zooms, as this lens was operating at an effective focal length of about 36 to 128 millimeters. But as you can see, very sharp images being captured, beautiful colors, especially from these nice paint jobs here on these classic cars. The control over depth of field is basically what you would expect when the fastest f-stop is 3.5, and the lens was able to produce that nice creamy background, that bokeh, when intended. It also worked very well in capturing action, say like with sports shots. Check out this stellar headshot. Monster kill, kill. headshot. <laughs> Nothing like capturing the moment. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but I had fun editing the footage from this lens. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is I was actually really impressed how well this operated as a mid-range zoom lens on the D7500, being a DX format camera. So the effective focal range is somewhere around 36 to 128 millimeters. And that being the case, you just saw it. It worked really well. It wasn't especially wide coming back. It couldn't get in really, really close, but it was just perfect to be that mid-range zoom. And not only that, um, you know, crystal clear shots, great color range. You guys saw that. It kind of ate up anything I threw at it. And I was actually truly impressed 
with uh, how well it did with fast moving subjects. Um, of course, it performed about as well as you would expect a lens at this price level, retailing at $500 with a fastest f-stop at 3.5. That's kind of what I expect out of a lens where they're asking that much from me. My only real tidbits where I nitpick at it is gonna be um, the barrel distortion when I really focused on that uh, when it's down at 24 millimeters. And then when I'm zoomed out to 85 millimeters, there's about equally as much pin cushion distortion. I would say, you know, a little bit above minimal on both of those. And I, you know, I always like to see as little amount of that as possible, whether it's the body that's dealing with it or the lens itself that's producing it. Um, I like to see that minimized in the product itself before I have to go into editing. So, you know, that's always something I like to nitpick at, especially in a price range of this lens. But honestly, it wasn't that bad at all. It wasn't noticeable until I isolated it with those lines on the driveway in the garage. So, pretty phenomenal overall. I give this lens an A+, plus as long as it's in your price range. It is a little bit... Uh, it is a little bit spendy, but that being the case, you know, this is a full frame lens. So you can put it on your DX format cameras. It works phenomenally well. And when you're ready to upgrade, boom, you can use this lens on the upgraded full body frame as well. Now, if you're interested in this lens for yourself, I'll post the link in the description below so you can check it out. But don't forget to comment and let me know what you think. Love to hear what you guys have to say. And I'll see you guys next time on the next drive by Remote Monster Kill. I mean, drive by reviews. Like a guest.